All right, let me show you something even more interesting than this. Go to Isaiah 28. Isaiah 28. So obviously during this time, you want to get away from it. You want to have peace. It's so interesting where you see certain movies or conspiracy documentations where there's this small band of the 1% who know that the who want the world to end and then they have their own safe little haven while the world's being killed by disease or famine or this demonic creature coming out. Now, if there are a good amount of Jew Jewish elites involved, they would want to be part of these elites who makes this covenant, this agreement, where the common people could die out from, from these four horsemen while they're safe. Look at this. Verse 15, God speaks to Israel. This is a prophecy in the tribulation. Because ye have said, we have made a covenant with who? Death. And with who? Hell. Are we at agreement? The Bible says, Daniel 9, 27, they make a covenant with the Antichrist, right? When they make this covenant, notice they also make a covenant with death and hell. So it's as if that they are being protected then. And there is your elites where you see movies and conspiracy statements of they're being harbored right over here. And not only that, these include who? A lot of Jews as well, Jewish elites, your Rothschilds, etc. Look at that. Look at that. And they have to make a covenant to have their shelter, their safe haven. Uh, let's keep reading right here. So it says they made a covenant with death and with hell. So while the whole world is getting wiped out, they're going to be in their uh, bunkers, their safe, uh, their safety rooms, etc. Safe, space. safe spaces. Mm -hmm. <laughs> safe spaces. Here's my own safe space. <laughs> Don't cross this line. <laughs> Don't touch it. Now here's something interesting, though, is that when they make this covenant, look at this. This entity, when the overflowing scourge shall pass through, it shall not come unto us. For we have made lies our refuge, and all under falsehood have we hid ourselves. That's right. If you look at past history of elites, they always made crooked deception, deal, sneaky. Through this, they have this covenant where they're safe. But they're going to be safe when this overflowing scourge, they call it, passes through. Dr. Upman, I could not really understand it, but I can show you some few interesting verses, which is very interesting. He called this overflowing scourge, the infamous shadow of death. Now, why is it that Satan's movies, they seem to have more insight than Christians, where like a famous TV show like Lost, they have this dark little cloud, this black mist or something, and it could trod you down. It can kill you. But the Bible was way ahead because there's this black little shadow of death that can trod you down, actually. Because let's read it right here. At verse 18, And your covenant with death shall be disannulled. See, the covenant's broken. And your agreement with hell shall not stand. It's going to be broken. When the overflowing skirt shall pass through... Then ye shall be what? Trodden down by it. Hey, Hollywood, where'd you get that idea from? The Bible was way ahead of you. Crazy. All right, let me... Sh All right. Now, I always thought of this as a metaphorical phrase, which is true. Shadow of death can refer to something as a metaphorical phrase as if, like, you're on the verge of death, right? So let's look at one example. Matt, Psalms 23, the famous book, right? Psalms 23. So it would refer as if you're on the edge of death. So that's what I thought too. I thought that it could just be a metaphorical phrase referring to as if you're on the verge, the edge of death. Look at Psalms 23, verse 4. Psalms 23, verse 4. Notice that uh, what's so interesting, I was very shocked. Type down shadow of death in your Bible. And there are so many verses which shock me. And a lot of these Old Testament saints dreaded this weird little entity, this shadow of death. 
And when I read it, I see it a lot of times as referring to as being at the edge of death. That's how I could picture it as. Like this example, Psalms chapter 23, verse 4. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. So King David's saying that when he goes through this valley of the shadow of death, he'll still be protected by God's rod and staff. As if he's on the edge of death when he, he's about to cross over the death's riverbed or the shadow of death, he'll still be safety in God's hands. So you can take it that way, but I notice in this passage, it could be a literal created thing. Look at Amos 5. This can be a literal creation, actually. As literal as the sun, as night and day, as a scientific element. Look at Amos 5. Amos 5. Your book is not an interesting book. I think that's what we learned from today's Bible lesson, right? Oh, the Bible's boring. Oh, I don't want to come to church. Oh, I don't want to attend Bible study. It's just boring stuff. Blah, blah, blah. Ah. Look at Amos chapter 5. Notice what the Bible says right here, which is pretty interesting. We're going to read verse 20. Shall not the day of the Lord be darkness and not light, even very dark, and no brightness in it. Okay, uh, let's look back over here at Amos, let's see right here, oh, where is that verse? I, it was Amos, uh, verse 8, verse 8. So darkness and light, we know that those are real things, right? It's not a met metaphorical thing, right? Darkness and light. Now look at verse 8. Seek him that maketh the seven stars in Orion. Are those metaphorical or are those real? Yeah. Those are real, right? Yeah. And turneth the shadow of death, let's make that metaphorical, into the what? Is mourning metaphorical or literal? It's a real thing, mourning. Keep reading. And maketh the day dark with night. That's a literal thing. Call it for the waters of the sea. That's literal. Poureth them out upon the face of the earth. That's literal. Look at this. In verse 8, the Bible shows right here that the shadow of death is a literal entity then. Whoa. I mean, if you're going to go by context and read the verse as it says, you can't just pick and choose which one you want metaphorical and literal. If you're a very honest reader, that's a literal thing. So this shadow of death then is a literal thing. It's a literal element. That's crazy. When I saw that, I'm like, man, that's crazy, Lord. So then Dr. Upman, he'll mention in his Adlet commentaries on Revelation or in his Apocalypse book, you'll see this black shadow of death trying to engulf the children of Israel. This is really interesting stuff. But um, David, it seems like it may be something more prophetic than devotional than in Psalms 23. When David says, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me when I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, when he says that, it could be a prophecy, tribulation to Israel, because when that because Isaiah, you read Isaiah, yeah. where it says that overflow, flowing scourge is going to come upon Israel, right? It's going to wipe them out. Yeah. But when you read the book of Micah, the Bible says that God will have his people flee into the wilderness. And what's so interesting is in the book of Revelation, it calls it the valley of something. Oh, yeah. And then what's so interesting is that in the book of Micah, the Bible says that when God feeds his people. Revelation 12, it says that he's going to feed his people in the wilderness. With what? Micah, ch ch the last chapter of Micah said, feed thy people as you have fed them as the days of old with Moses at the wilderness. That's manna. Yeah. And it says, feed them with thy rod. Oh, wow. Psalms 23, when I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. You know what he also says? Thou preparest a table oh, before me in the presence of mine enemies. Woo, crazy stuff. Yeah. All right, we have to end it here. Sorry. All right, we're going to show you more crazy stuff. All right, I'm going to show you more crazy stuff later on as we read through the Bible.